Good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the painting studio. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And this will be session five of painting a Drake spectacled eider. And uh, in the previous sessions, we got most of the body details done. Today, we'll finish the body detailing. There's a little bit yet to do there and get a start on the head. I don't know how far we'll get on the head. We may get it finished today in this session. We'll see. If you're enjoying my channel and getting value out of it, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It's free, it doesn't cost anything, but it does help me out if you do that as I continue to build this YouTube channel. And my goal is really to create a library of resources for people who might want to carve decoys or who are carving decoys and want to uh, check out the way that I do it. Uh, I also wanted to mention I have 14 different painting videos on my website at tomchristyart.com and there is a link to my website on my YouTube channel homepage. If you click on that, it'll take you to that site. You can check out the 14 different painting videos. Those are for sale, but they're very similar to the level of detail I'm putting into this Drake Spectacle Biter. And uh, you might want to check that out. So let's get going on this session of painting the Drake Spectacle Lighter. All right, I want to work on these white feathers up here on the top of the back and also on the cape feathers. So I'm doing a little bit of layout work with the chalk pencil and laying in where these cape feathers lie. So I'll get that laid out and then we'll do some painting. You can kind of see how these line up here. Also going to lay out some feathers in this area down here. Just a little bit of an indication of white feather structure here. And those will kind of wrap around the side and we'll show a little, little bit of detail up here. We'll probably pull some of those feathers in to the black as well. So I've got a little scrubber brush here and I'm using some white gesso on it. And I'm going to use that to kind of outline these feathers, but then also scrub back and create a blend like we've done on other sections of the decoy. This is a, a smaller area, so I've got a much smaller scrubber here so that I can get into these tight spots. And then we'll come back over this with a little bit of detail. But we want this to be pretty subtle. So I'll do that on the cape as well. I'll show you a little bit on the cape. Same process though. I'm just hitting the edge and then kind of scrubbing back and forth and blending that out into the off-white base color. Hit the edge. Scrub it out. So we want the overall look to maintain white, but this indicates there's some layered feathers here making up this group of white cape feathers. All right, I've got those highlighted. Now I'm gonna take a little Nimbus Gray 
in the detail brush and put a few splits to kind of break these up a little bit. Same thing on the cape feathers. So I'll do that on all the white feathers and then we'll come back with some bright white and put some some more detail. Now I'm just going to go back over these white feathers with a little bit of gesso so the lighter color and just add a few feather barbs in here to create some depth. And define these feathers a little bit more. I'm also going to use uh, some of that to put some feather barbs carrying over the cape area into the back and just kind of feather this area out a little. There's kind of a nice blend between the cape feathers and the gray feathers going back. So I'm just pulling barbs through where I put these splits in just to finish the detail on these white feathers. Now I'm just taking a little uh, wash of the base off-white color and pulling that through all of this work to kind of knock down the intensity of the splits and pull things together just in this white work that we've done. And it just tends to soften things a little bit, make it more subtle and pull things together. Now I'm using a little carbon black and just going along the edge here and adding a few feather barbs up into the lighter areas. And then just kind of doing some smaller transitional feathers along this line between the light and the dark. I'm going to do the same thing up here in the neck. Just using my detail brush and try not to make these real regular, but put some variation. Now I want to work on this transitional area here. These are some underlying feathers. Doing a little chalk pencil work. And then we'll use burnt umber with the nimbus gray, kind of like we did here to create some layering in these feathers. 
kind of using that burnt umber nimbus gray and a little very small scrubber this is basically an eighth inch scrubber that's been worn down to a nub but it's perfect for this type of very small scrubbing so i'm going to work on a nice blend and we just want to be able to see that this is these are layered feathers but not change the look of this area as fundamentally black feathers. I'll work on that a while. Just a quick look at that area after blending a few times. Now I want to put a little bit of light feather structure in here and then we can pull some black splits into that area. Maybe pull a few more whites into that area and soften the whole look. Probably pull a few splits into these feathers from the gray as well. Just using the chalk pencil to pencil in some white feather tips here. Use the same process as we did on the cape just to highlight those. So I'm using the white gesso following my chalk guidelines and blending those feather edges then back into the off-white base. Just an indication of some layered feathers there. Then we'll go in with the carbon black and the detail brush. Pull a few splits from the black into those white feathers. Then using the, the gray base color of the back, just and the detail brush, just a few indications of some splits in those feathers. And now that that detail is done, I can take some carbon black and just pull a few feather barbs up and into this white area from this side pocket feather. Just another quick view of that area. Put a few more feather barb details in there and uh, that area is finished so we can move up to the head. Okay, I want to break this hard paint line up between the olive green and the white back. I'm just using the detail brush to go in just the very point of it and just put some detail along that line to make it look more like feathers that are splaying out on the back than just a hard paint line there. So I'll go over that area a few times just until it looks nice and soft. Hopefully you can see that. And while I have the off-white in my brush I'm going to go along this line and just put some feather markings to break up this hard line between the dark 
underneath the eye and this white below. Try to break this up a little bit and not be too patterned or regular. And that may take a couple of times to cover that dark green. But I want to show some feather structure there. Now I want to develop this crest. And I'm starting with the original base colors that we mixed up. The olive and the light yellow. And uh, starting with the light yellow up here, just pulling some flow lines out of the lighter yellow area and down into the crest. And I'm just kind of doing overlapping lines and try not to make this look too regular and adding more olive as I go down the side here. So I'm not lining these up. I'm trying to create what looks like an interlocking or overlapping flow and then transitioning to the green down here. We want a nice graceful flow of this crest as it goes down the back of the head. And I'm just kind of using my judgment on the combination of green and yellow. So as I get closer to the top, I'm just putting a little more yellow in the brush. And then it mixes with the olive green. And as we go down the head, I want to transition fully to the olive green. These kind of meet in the back and then on the opposite side here, same routine. Start with a little more yellow up here. Come around the head. And start flowing down and there's a little bit of a, a back turn as you come down the side here across this blue green area you want a lot of water in the brush so that in the brush and paint so that this flows off of your paintbrush in a nice even line and not a broken line. If you if you don't have enough water, you'll the brush will start to skip areas and it'll just not look natural. And you'll kind of lose that flow look that you're looking for. I'm showing a lot of this because I think this is a challenging painting process for, for a lot of people. So I think it's worth spending a little bit of time showing this. I'm going to turn the bird around and go from the bottom up then. And then I need to tie into these lines as they curl around the side in this blue green area and pull those towards the, the back of the head. We're trying to create kind of a layered look. I'll keep working this 
The other thing we're going to do is add a little darker values uh, to create some additional depth. And we'll do that next. But I'll go ahead and finish this until I'm satisfied with the way it looks. And then we'll come back and put some darker values in there. Every once in a while, you like right there, that's too much paint. Very easy to let that dry and just come back and block it out again so it, uh, so it looks like it ties in with the rest of it. All right, I've added a little phthalo green and burnt umber to the olive color to darken it. And I'm using that particularly on the lower section here and on this side where the blue green area is. Tends to get a little rougher down there, the uh, crest, so we want to show some texture and depth back here. Again, I'm just kind of interlocking lines here. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. So I'm starting at the bottom of the crest and kind of coming up. Putting a little more water in so that I get nice smooth lines. right through this blue-green area. I'm not going to pull that up into this area because I want to leave this a little smoother looking up near the top of the head. But down here, the crest gets pretty coarse. So we're just trying to indicate that. I'll keep working on that, but that's getting close, and I'll put a little more work up on the top of the head as well. Up on top, I put a little off-white in with the yellow to lighten it a bit, just so it shows up, and just putting a few marks up here to indicate there's feathers there. Now I've got carbon black, and I'm going to go around these eye patch areas and add just a little bit of edge detail so they're not hard lines. And I'm going to do that in both directions, kind of keeping in mind the feathers are flowing this way. So I'm going to want my little feather barbs going in that direction. Again, kind of varying this a little bit as we go so it's not too regular. And I'll do that on the front part of this as well, and then also come back with some white in the opposite direction. So really work those transition lines to, to soften things and make them look natural rather than just a hard, harsh transition between white and black. You got some of the off-white, like we talked about going back in the opposite direction adding a few feather barbs into the black and I'll keep going back and forth 
until I feel like it looks natural. While I have the off-white in the brush, I'm going to add just a little detail to this lighter area in front of the black. We had scrubbed some a light value in there, but this just adds a little realism to those light markings in front of the eye patch. All right, now I want to add some white, light white details to these white areas, and I've got white gesso and the detail brush, and I'm going in and putting kind of some overlapping lines to indicate some feather structure here. You can't see a lot of individual feathers, so this is more kind of feather flow, but it does a, a pretty effective job of making it look like there are feathers in that area. So again, I'm just using a very fine line with that bright white on top of the off-white base and following my feather flow pattern and just kind of doing some interlocking flow lines. And then tying that down into the feathers down here. Give you a better shot of that. I hope you can see that. Then we'll do the same thing on the eye patch. Starting at the front, very small lines. Kind of highlighting this little cheek area and then pulling those down. So we don't need a lot here, but it really gives that off-white some additional depth. Kind of pulling into these areas to line up with the previous marks we put. Now above the eye, these will start coming up. Again, interlocking, kind of wrapping around the top of the eye. And then as we get up over, they're going to start coming up to the crown and wrapping over that eye patch. and then start curling back down in back here so that they line up somewhat with the flow lines in the crest. So it's pretty subtle, but really looks nice, I think. And we painted this area Thalo green with carbon black. These are pure black, and I want to green this up a little bit because you can see they're 
There are varying levels of green down here, depending on the phase the bird is in. But <clears throat> I'm taking the base avocado color, added a little carbon black and phthalo green, I'm sorry, a little phthalo green and burnt umber to it to make it a kind of a darker olive color. And I'm using a little scrubber to scrub that in down here to really make this show green and not just so dark that it just looks like black, like the uh, eye patches up above. So I'm scrubbing that back and forth and kind of focused on the middle of the area and leaving the edges dark. And then we can come back in and put a little detail over this to show some feather down here. So I've done that on both sides. And it's still nice and dark, but there's just a subtle hint of the dark green in there. And now I'm taking some carbon black and the detail brush and kind of pulling it through there in overlapping fashion just to show the indication of some feathers in there. And they tend to flow back in this direction and tuck under the crest. So it just gives a little bit of a feather structure to that area. Then to finish that off, I'm using a little of the olive base color for the head or the crest and just pulling a few lighter olive green lines through that area just to add some highlights and uh, further convey that that area has some green values to it. This area of feathers is a challenge to paint because it's almost like a fur stole. It's, it doesn't even look like feathers. Um, so we want to try to represent that in paint. You can do a couple of things. You can put a sponged texture in this area and then that gives it a little bit of a that look. What I've done is kind of use some sandpaper and uh, shape this little eighth inch scrubber down into kind of a, a point. And I've got some of the olive green base. I left the saddle here kind of dark intentionally so that I could come back. And I'm gonna use just this brush and just hit it all over with this olive green and leave little texture marks. To give it that indication that it's this very soft area of feathers. I'll also wash out the brush Come back in with uh, off-white, and that's a challenge to get all of the green out of that little nub of a scrubber. And I don't want much water in it. I'm going to add a little white gesso to lighten it a bit. And then I'm gonna hit this area up front with that. 
and just create a, kind of a series of interlocking dots that would indicate that the ends of this textured surface. And kind of fade that, those marks into this area as well. And try to keep them random so there's no distinguishable pattern. I'm going to do the same thing up here with the white. You kind of bring that into the saddle area. Try to keep those dots very small. And then there's an area that I talked about that is a little sienna colored in front here. So I want to do the same in that area and add some raw sienna. And just do a few marks in that area. And kind of fade that into the darker olive saddle. So I'll work this for a while. This will take some time. There's also some, uh, at least in my reference, you see quite a few with some darker markings down here. So I'm using burnt umber, and I'm going to add that to the to the dots down in this area as you get lower on the saddle. So I'll work on this and then come back. But that's kind of the technique I'm using for this saddle area. Now I'm just using a little burnt umber and the detail brush to darken in the nostril. All right, when I'm done with the bird, I seal it with Tester's Dull Coat, a couple of coats of that, and then I hit this bird with Krylon Matte Finish. Use a nice matte with a little bit of sheen to kind of look like bird feathers. And then the bill I finished with semi-gloss, so I masked the bird off, sprayed deft semi-gloss on the bill. Here's just a quick look at my painting area. It looks like a disaster. I, I do use a lot of brushes, but they're a lot of the same brush. I just uh, pick a new brush out so I can keep moving and uh, not have cross-contamination if I don't rinse a brush out good. It's about, uh, I think about 12 different colors there used on this bird. Yeah, I wasn't planning on this, but I wanted to put a little bit of an insert, an outtake into the video. Um, I got feedback, a question actually from a viewer from session four. And he said, hey Tom, take a look at it. I think you've got some roughness or ripples in the primaries back here, right along these carved edges. And my first reaction is kind of defensive. Now, okay, thanks. The right reaction was take a deep breath, take a look at it. He was right. I went back, bit the bullet, got out my sandpaper again, refined those uh, feathers, and I'm much happier with the results. And it's a better decoy because of that critique. I'm not asking for a bunch of critiques, believe me, because it's a little intimidating putting all this stuff out and uh, you never know what kind of reaction you're going to get. I'm hoping this is helpful stuff. But again, I thought that was worth mentioning because you'll notice in the final reference photos, those primaries are smoother than they were in the work that we did up until 
uh, this final session. So now back to our regularly scheduled programming. All right, everybody, that's a wrap on the spectacled Eider Drake. And uh, on this project, we took it from beginning, carved every step of the way through every step of paint. And even if you're not doing a spectacled Eider Drake, my uh, hope is that you're able to pick up some uh, tips either in the carving or the painting that you can apply to your own project. I will include some finished studio photos of this bird from different angles so you have those for your reference as well in case you do want to tackle a spectacle lighter. They're, they're a fantastic bird. I've really developed a new appreciation for the bird by carving and painting a couple of them. So until next time, Tom Christie signing out. Good carving to you, good painting to you. Have fun out there.